Good morning, happy Thursday, and you know, considering I was able to do something I really wanted to do yesterday, you'd think I'd be a little bit happier, but I'm not, and it all stems from my love, and that is for something, like the, um, the power cord to my computer, to my laptop has been, like, been not working forever, but luckily I have, like, a backup power cord. It doesn't charge the battery, but at least it keeps electricity running through my computer. But now, like, for whatever reason, my computer will... Here's the thing. It lights up, but the screen just, like, will not turn on. So, um, if anyone has any advice, that'd be really great. But, uh... Not to mention, in terms of like what my low is, this week has been, it's felt long. Like, really long. Like, I can't believe it's only Thursday today. When, like, we had, we had a lot of people literally had a day off on Monday. There's no reason why this week should feel like it's slow, but it is. Which, I mean, maybe today will go by fast, I don't know. And finally, uh, my act of kindness was I actually helped my mama donate some clothes. So, uh, I did that. So, um, well, actually, uh, I forgot to say what my high was, didn't I? I'm sorry. My high was I got my watermelon fed salad monoroll. Oh my god, it was so good. It was so good. Seriously, I was legit posting on social media of how if it's 5.30 in the evening and I still haven't arrived to get it, then assume something terrible is amiss and send a search party. Throughout my entire day yesterday, it rained all day. One of my tires is starting to go flat. And I had to have myself a good cry. But I got my watermelon feta salad. And it was so good. Oh my God, it was so good. Oh, I miss it so much. I had this opening day last year because of my grandmother's funeral on my mom's side. So, I wasn't going to miss opening day again. And I didn't. Although, next year when I go there for opening day for watermelon and best salad, I think I'm going to, I'm going to try going a little earlier than almost, like, I said if it was 5.30, y'all had sent a search party for me. It was 5.25 when I got there. I just barely made it on time. Crazy, right? So, um, considering that tomorrow is going to be a very big video regarding talking about the episode of Hot Ones coming out today and the fact I have to do May 2024 a month in retrospective, I might as well continue the art class series. Yeah. I will. Yeah, it's funny too. Because back when I was doing the art thoughts for One Piece, doing it actually kind of made time seem to go by a little bit faster. Like there was always something to look forward to in like at the end of each and every month. Which I'm glad. I which I'm glad I was able to do. And I'm glad I've been able to do it for a Dragon Ball so far, but I don't know. It just seems like the month, the month in between feels longer. I mean, it is true. Some days I'm doing it like on the very last. I, mean, I guess when I did the Arc Thoughts last week, last in April. Um. It was the last Saturday in April, and we still have like a few more days to go. So I guess maybe that's why it feels a little bit longer. Um, I don't know. But the good news is, I'm glad I get to do this again. 
because if I recall, I actually ended the last Arc Thoughts on a rather dark cliffhanger. So, I in my last Arc Thoughts video, I talked about the uh, 22nd Budokai Tenkaichi, or the 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament. And what happened was, Goku left his uh, Dragon Ball at, um, at the arena, so Krillin went to go get it. Goku thinks, wow, Krillin's taking a long time. He goes to the arena, and he finds out that Krillin is dead! So, yeah. That's what happened. So who killed Krillin? Turns out, it was a, uh, a monster by the name of Tambourine. However, this was an ordinary monster, as this monster was the quote-unquote son of not only the overall antagonist of this arc, but also the arc, or Saga's namesake as well, King Piccolo. And this is no ordinary, this is no ordinary enemy that Goku has fought. Like, this, I mean, no, we, we don't really know where Piccolo comes from yet. All we know is that he's a demon, he's terrorizing humanity, he needs to be stopped. Very simple. At least, it's easier said than done. Because Master Roshi not only knows who King Piccolo is, he battled King Piccolo. It was his master, Motaito, who actually, actually, he couldn't defeat King Piccolo. No. He had to do something called the Evil Containment Wave, and then he put um, uh, King Piccolo in a, um, a rice cooker. And here's what, I mean, everything about this arc, the one thing about this arc that's always bothering me, totally not Mark, thankfully touched upon this as well, is that after Motaito put um, uh, the right, King Piccolo in the rice cooker, he threw that rice cooker into what was seemingly the deepest part of the ocean. So how did he come back? That's the one thing they never explain. Like, how did King Piccolo come back from that? I mean, it was at the bottom of the ocean. No sub of tech, no technology can reach that far. That's the one thing we, that was never explained. I mean, I guess in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter because, you know, King Piccolo is so bad, you can worry about how later. But to this day, it's never been touched upon. I mean, it's implied that um, Emperor Pilaf and his gang were able to, were, were able to get the um, rice cooker because they're clearly serving under King Piccolo throughout this arc. But again, how'd they do it? Never explained. That's literally the one major criticism I have of this arc. And listen, Dragon Ball is not a perfect series. Every single arc in its own way has had flaws. This is a glaring flaw, but it's not the most glaring. Anyway, basically King Piccolo's plan is quite simple. In order to take over the world, he knows he needs to take out the strongest fighters in the world. So his, you know, sons, these monster creatures, they are destroying, they're killing fighters left and right one by one. At the same time, he needs the Dragon Balls because King Piccolo wants to regain his youth. See, he'll be more powerful that way if he's young. On the flip side of this, Tien is going through his own, you know, grief because before he fought Goku, he genuinely was not a very good person. There's actually this one um, scene I remember watching from the anime. I think it's Philip, I'm not sure. Where, like, they went to stop the match that Tien was in. He was fighting this one guy. And he's, like, brutally beating up this guy, right? Like, they try and stop him, but Tien's like, screw this. And then he legit, like, destroys this guy's leg. Like elbow the guy, like, right on top of him, and he destroys his leg. Like, the guy's walking with a cane from now on. 
I, that's how cruel Tien used to be. But he wants to confront those sins, and then, because basically his plan is to use the evil, the evil containment wave on King Pickle. Very simple. Um, at the same time, Goku's looking for revenge for Krillin. He runs into Yajirobe. And he actually does fight King Pickle for the first time before he regains his view. And it's not that Goku wasn't strong, not at all. It's just King Piccolo is better. That's that's really all it was. And this is before he got his youth back. So I'm like, okay, if Goku can't destroy King Piccolo being as old as he is, what, how's Goku going to do this? Well, he goes back to Korin's Tower and drinks the true sacred water, which not only gave him a boost in strength, but also allowed him to sense the whereabouts of others, you know, reading reading uh, power levels and energy and stuff. Which, okay, that's how they do it. Although, that's actually one plot device that ser that's served to be quite well throughout the series, because by the end of the series, lots of people are able to sense each other's energy. But does that mean they all were able to, um, they all drink out of the sacred water? Because if that's the case, then someone should have told that to Vegeta. Because Vegeta was able to figure that out on his own. That's it. Well, this is awkward. I didn't even do anything to move this. Holy cow. Okay, so. Hold on. So in the process of King Piccolo trying to gain back his youth, he um, obviously already kills Krillin. He kills Master Roshi, and he kills Chaozu. Not to mention, okay, seriously, what gives? Do I have to lay down like this? Nah, it doesn't look right. Thank you. Okay, seriously, if it falls again, I'm gonna be so upset. Tell me about difficulties, right? Anyway, um, and here's the thing: King Piccolo kills a whole slew of fighters, but what's really, but remember, this is Dragon Ball. You can use Dragon Ball's wish your friends back to life, right? Well, yes, you can. However. If someone dies, and you use the Dragon Balls to bring someone back to life, and that person you brought back to life dies again, they can't be brought back. So, at best, this is a temporary fix. Which, I gotta give it to Akira Toriyama, God rest his soul. Because, I wouldn't necessarily say this is more like, you're still not disturbing the natural order. You know, because everyone needs to die. Really what you're doing is simply delaying the process of the natural order. Which has its pros and cons, but if bringing someone back to life means there's a chance to help save the world, yeah, the, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. So anyway, um, Tien tries to use the evil container of King Piccolo. He's not able to do it, so now it's up to Goku. Having drunk the sacred water. And he's fighting against King Piccolo who got his youth, who, who has his youth back. And it's a, it's a tough fight for Goku, it really is. I mean, by the end of the fight, all Goku can use is one arm. But that's all he needed. Like, he takes his arm. Pretty sure it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was his right arm. He tries to look at Kamehameha from one arm, plants it on the ground. He's like laying flat down on the ground, by the way. He like plants it on the ground, he shoots up in the air at King Piccolo, and then like his inherent, his inherent like Uzaru power, or you know, Saiyan power, he like blows right through King Piccolo's stomach. And then he kills King Piccolo, but not before King Piccolo bears one more son. See, the way that King Piccolo was able to, like, was able to make those monsters is, um, he coughs up eggs. And the monsters hatch from those eggs. So, he hatches one more egg, 
his contingency plan for the future, and then he died. And, you know, the world is saved. They're able to use the Dragon Balls to bring back everyone who's died from King Piccolo's rampage. I mean, listen, this is, this arc was definitely one of the most typical for Goku in terms of just how incredibly high the stakes are. Because when it came to the Pilaf saga, I never thought Goku was in any real danger, at least to the part where he was going to die. With the Red Ribbon Army, it was definitely a step up from Pilaf. But still, not that much of a threat. King Piccolo came very close to killing Goku. And, I mean, listen, obviously Goku is going to be able to kill King Piccolo because the plot demanded it. But, could you really be certain about that? You don't know. But the world is saved and now everyone's training for the 23rd Budokai Tenkaichi, or 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament. And I'm sure we'll never deal with Piccolo ever again. But before that happens, Goku has some more training at uh, Kame's Tower, which is above Korin's Tower. And the way that Goku gets there is so cool. Because Goku's at that power pole, which is able to extend. There's actually a little slot on top of Korin's Tower. And Goku's able to extend the pole all the way up to where Kame's Tower is. That is so cool. Like... It's such a simple item, but it leads to a huge plot moment. That's so awesome. And uh, Goku is in for quite the shock when he finally meets Kami. Because, um, well, I'll save that for the Arc Thoughts next month. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, YouTube channel, on social media. As always, I'm very humble. This video for all of you guys who watch the video. We'll be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thursday. Remember, you guys are going to our talk channel, which we get going there. Once you're back, take care and make good choices. 607 all day, baby.